If you have ever driven in downtown Milwaukee, you may have noticed that the bridges over the Milwaukee River, well, they don't make sense. The streets on either side of the river don't properly line up with one another, and so the road will suddenly veer off at bizarre angles, crossing the river, and then bending again to connect with a street on the other side. What many drivers don't realize is that these streets harken back, deep in Wisconsin's lore, back to the tale of fur trader Solomon Juno, surveyor Byron Kilborn, and the legendary animosity between the two politicians, leading to an event recorded in the annals of Wisconsinite lore as the Bridge War. It is a tale of rivalry and spite. It is a tale of politics, terrorism, and psychological warfare. And above all else, it is a tale about bridges. To understand the roots of this conflict, we have to go back, back to before there even was a Milwaukee. Originally, the east side of the Milwaukee River was known as Juno Town, founded by Solomon Juno. The west side was known as Kilbourne Town, founded by Byron Kilbourne. There was also Walker's Point to the south, founded by George H. Walker, which was basically an ally of Kilbourne Town in this conflict, at least in terms of politics. Juno arrived in the Milwaukee area first. Born in Quebec, Juno was a fur trader who moved to Wisconsin to work as a clerk in the fur trade gaining a reputation as a skilled accountant and being incredibly well-respected and liked by the Menominee, in part due to his half-Menominee wife, Josette Vio. Juno began developing Juno Town in 1818 on the east side of the Milwaukee River and became a nationalized U.S. citizen in 1831. Kilborn was a surveyor and engineer, born in Connecticut and raised in Ohio. He arrived in the Milwaukee area in 1834 where he purchased land on the west side of the river in an allegedly shady deal with the Potawatomi. Walker was a fur trader from Virginia. He was 350 pounds, but seemed to have an incredibly active lifestyle despite that fact. He was said to have been both a graceful dancer and a nimble ice skater, and he even served as a volunteer fireman. He was said to have been a genuinely kind, caring, and jovial person. Walker arrived shortly after Kilbourne, building the first of many of his trading posts just south of the Milwaukee River. For reasons lost to time, Juno and Kilbourne hated each other. And believe me, I have searched long and hard for the precise origin of this conflict, but could find nothing. All I can say for sure is that, for whatever the reason, the two hated each other from nearly the start. Of the three settlements, Juno Town was the most populous, with more people than the other two settlements combined. However, Kilbourne Town had its own advantage. A trade route came up from Chicago through Walker's Point and Kilbourne Town, completely passing by Juno Town, a fact Kilbourne would exploit. Kilbourne launched a propaganda effort, giving maps to travelers and traders in Kilbourne Town that showed absolutely nothing on the east side of the river. When, inevitably, people would just look across the river and see that there clearly were buildings on the other side, Kilbourne explained that Juno Town wasn't actually a settlement, but rather an Indian trading post, attempting to gaslight people into simply believing that Juno Town didn't even exist. He also ordered all of the ship captains working for him to also spread the Indian trading post story to their passengers. Despite being cut off from the rest of the settlements, and despite Kilbourne's efforts to deny its very existence, Juno Town continued to grow, and in 1835 would build its first inn the first of the three settlements to do so. The animosity between Juno and Kilbourne continued, and when the two began planning out streets, neither Juno nor Kilbourne paid any attention to the streets on the other side of the river, causing the streets to simply not line up, which is why the bridges are the way they are today. Juno and Kilbourne would continue on passive-aggressively ignoring one another until 1839, when the territorial government of Wisconsin issued an order for Juno Town and Kilbourne Town to formally incorporate as a single city. A board of trustees was formed in order to facilitate the merger, and Juno and Kilbourne now found themselves forced to work together to unite their settlements into one. Obviously, this was not destined to go smoothly. Initially, a system of ferries was used to facilitate travel between Juno Town and Kilbourne Town, but in 1840, the territorial government of Wisconsin declared that these ferries were insufficient for the amount of travel that was needed over the river and ordered the construction of a bridge to unite the two sides. Acting on these orders, 
The majority of the trustees agree on Chestnut Street as the location to build the bridge, with Juno's support, but Kilbourne's opposition. Kilbourne argued that a bridge at Chestnut Street would damage the river's docks, hurting the economy and trade of Milwaukee. Later the same year, Kilbourne would build his own bridge over the Menominee River, bridging Kilbourne Town with Walker's Point. Two years later, in 1842, Kilbourne further supported the construction of a bridge over the Milwaukee at Spring Street, which gave Westsiders direct access to Milwaukee's post office and courthouse, which were on the east side. Then in 1844, two more bridges were privately built by East Siders, one at Oneida Street, providing another link between Junotown and Kilbourne Town, and one at Water Street, linking Junotown with Walker's Point. Kilbourne, and the West Side in general, opposed the construction of these bridges. They again argued that the river's dock infrastructure would be damaged by the bridges. And due to the nuisance caused to Kilbourne Town docks, the West Siders as a whole refused to fund the maintenance and repairs of the bridges. The Water Street Bridge was also, by all accounts, a ramshackle affair, more of an improvised platform than a permanent installation. This brings us to the state of affairs in 1845, the year of the war, where the West has two bridges, the East has three bridges, and the West opposes the East's bridges claiming damage to city ports. Also in 1845, Walker's Point was added to the plan for Milwaukee, giving Kilbourne a valuable ally on the Board of Trustees in George H. Walker, who along with Walker's Point, generally sided with the West Side on the topic of the bridges. This also caused a shift in local politics, whereas previously, the Juno Town side outnumbered the Kilbourne Town side, and thus was largely able to have their way on the matter of the bridges. The people of Walker's Point balanced out the population difference, leaving both East and West on roughly equal footing when it came to both sides of the bridge issue. And so tensions were high over local bridge politics. And then, on the 3rd of May, a schooner rammed the Spring Street Bridge. Rumors immediately began spreading that the East Siders had bribed the schooner's captain to ram the West Side's only bridge over the Milwaukee River. Having complained about the East Side's bridges unfairly harming West Side businesses for years now, and with the West Side's bridge now perceived as being under attack, the West sought to retaliate, first by political means. A proposal was brought before the Board of Trustees, with both Kilbourne and Walker's support, proposing that the Chestnut Street Bridge be declared a formal nuisance and ordering it demolished. The vote is close, but ultimately fails, six to seven. Angered by the failure of the vote, some Westsiders then held a private meeting. If the trustees wouldn't do anything about the issue, they figured they'd hold their own vote and deal with it themselves. And so the angry Kilbourne Town mob voted, declaring the Chestnut Bridge an insupportable nuisance, regardless of what the trustees said. The mob then gathered tools and demolished their side of the Chestnut Street Bridge, which of course caused the east side of the bridge to also collapse. In retaliation for this, the east side formed its own mob, gathering and stockpiling weapons. They even managed to secure a cannon, loading it with clock weights, and set it up pointed across the river at Kilbourne's house. Things were quickly escalating. Tensions were only lessened by the sudden and tragic death of Kilbourne's daughter, causing the east siders, in an act of moral decency, to remove the cannon pointed at the house of a grieving father. While this event lessened local tensions, they still simmered beneath the surface, and the West Side again attempted to politically maneuver against the East, this time proposing to the Board of Trustees that the Oneida Street Bridge be demolished, proposing to use the materials salvaged from that bridge to repair the damaged Spring Street Bridge. This time, the West's proposal passed the vote. The success of the vote angered the East Side, who feared losing both of their preferred bridges between Juno Town and Kilburn Town. And so the East Side rioted, forming a mob and destroying the Spring Street Bridge on the 28th of May, followed shortly after by the bridge over the Menominee. Within less than a month of the schooner ramming, two of the bridges between East and West had been destroyed by rioters. The bridge between Kilbourne Town and Walker's Point was destroyed with a fourth bridge condemned for legal demolition as well. The next few weeks were followed by open violence, with East and West Siders alike assaulted for being on the wrong side of the river. East Siders began spreading terroristic propaganda, 
insinuating that they were soon going to attack a dam on the Milwaukee River that was owned by Kilbourne. There were ultimately no fatalities from the violence, though there were serious injuries on both sides, as mob rule became the norm. In June, the trustees attempted to regain control of the situation. They levied a fine of $50 for anyone caught destroying a bridge, and furthermore ordered all bridge construction to be done under armed guard to prevent the angry mobs from destroying all rebuilding attempts. Over time, with the trustees clamping down on violence, tensions cooled, and in December, the trustees put together a plan to order the construction of three bridges, as well as formally putting forth a city charter for Milwaukee. The three agreed upon bridges included the reconstruction of the Spring Street Bridge, a plan to replace the ramshackle Water Street Bridge with a proper bridge, and the construction of a new bridge at Cherry Street. Likely this plan was strategic, rebuilding the West's favored bridge, rebuilding one of the East's bridges into a proper installation, and constructing a third, completely new bridge. On the face of it, it looks like it was designed to appease all sides. However, the East Side viewed this as unfair. Ultimately, they were losing their two preferred bridges over the Milwaukee, only keeping their bridge to Walker's Point, while the West Side got to keep its preferred Milwaukee River Bridge. This feeling of injustice was evident in the vote to affirm the new city charter. Voters from Kilbourne Town and Walker's Point voted almost unanimously for the charter, voting 461 to 8, whereas the majority of Juneau Town voted against it, 324 to 182. However, since enough Eastsiders had broken from their side and voted to affirm the charter, the charter still ended up being formally adopted. And in the following month of January 1846, Milwaukee formally incorporated. Solomon Juno would be the first elected mayor of the newly incorporated Milwaukee. In 1854, he would retire, moving and founding the village of Teresa in Dodge County. In 1855, on a visit to the Menominee, he died at the age of 63, dying in the arms of his steadfast friend Benjamin Hunkins, a man who would go on to one day introduce legislation into the state assembly proposing that the state of Wisconsin should declare war against the United States. Six Menominee chiefs would serve as pallbearers at Juno's funeral, honoring Juno's close friendship with the Menominee nation. Byron Kilbourne would be elected to be both the third and eighth mayor of Milwaukee. He also co-founded West Bend in 1845, and in doing so established a trade route from Milwaukee, and by extension Chicago, to Green Bay. In 1857, he identified a location that he thought would be perfect for tourism and founded Kilbourne City, which is today known as the Wisconsin Dells. Apart from founding economically significant cities, Kilbourne made a rather infamous name for himself in the railroad industry, where he dodged repeated scandals and allegations of fraud and mismanagement. In 1868, he moved to Florida to ease the pain of his arthritis, dying there in 1870. His body returned to Milwaukee for burial, George H. Walker would be elected to be both the 5th and 7th mayor of Milwaukee, also serving as a state assemblyman. He invested his wealth into the railroad industry and seemed to devote himself to improving the city of Milwaukee, helping to build the city's first streetcar, and advocating for building a ferry system across Lake Michigan that he believed would enable Milwaukee to outcompete Chicago. Following the Civil War, he dedicated himself to helping veterans of the conflict, helping to establish the Milwaukee Soldiers' Home. He died in 1866 while campaigning for veterans. With the city formally united, eventually the anger of the bridge war would fade, dissipating into the pages of Wisconsinite lore. Milwaukee's tumultuous early history can still be seen today, preserved in the street layout of downtown and in the flag of the city of Milwaukee, where the three lines under the sun symbolize both the three rivers that meet in Milwaukee as well as the three men who founded it, and the settlements that bore their names. And thus this chapter of Wisconsinite deep lore has come to an end. The Great Milwaukee Bridge War has firmly solidified itself within the annals of our state's story as one of the most absurd conflicts in all of Wisconsinite history.